Hi there, and welcome to the Praying Christian Women podcast. I'm Jamie Hampton, and I get to be here with one of my favorite people, actually, Nancy Hicks, who's been an on-air spokesperson for QVC. Um, she's also been on the podcast. You might remember her speaking about her book, Meant to Live, recently. Um, but if you've forgotten, she, um, ha- after earning her master in theology, she launched her own speaking ministry, which is called Nancy Hicks Live. She has a contagious passion for Jesus Christ, and her mission is to raise up women around the globe by igniting and equipping them, and she really does this, and just, I love talking to her. You can find her speaking all over the place, um, probably not across the world right now because of COVID restrictions, but generally she's found all over the world speaking at conferences, retreats, um, but definitely by television, radio, social media, and um, she recently published Meant to Live, Living in the Light of the Good News, Living in Light of the Good News, which we talked about in our last interview. Um, since then, though, Nancy, you've um, released it as an audiobook, right? Yes, I have. And, and she has just launched a um, companion online course called Meant to Live Six Sessions, which I'm excited to talk about with you today. So thanks for being here, Nancy. Pure pleasure, Jamie. Thanks again for having me. Yeah. Well, we like to, before we get into it, we, we like to talk about, we like to do our just for fun question. And since I've already done, what is your favorite prayer closet? I wanted to ask you, first of all, I don't know if we've gotten to this important question, coffee or tea? What is your thing? Are you Ooh. a co- Well, my, my go-to would be tea because okay. I'm from Canada originally. That's right. <laughs> and- and all my years on the stage, you know, I was a singer back in Canada before I became an on-air spokesperson for QVC. But even during those times, um, tea is soothing to the voice. So, but see, when I started at QVC, those crazy hours I worked, right. I got into coffee. So right now in front of me, the truth be known, I have, even though you can't see it, if you're listening to me, I have a cup of coffee. What about you? I, I have mine too. I'm coffee. <laughs> I'm, I'm a okay, coffee well, girl, okay. but I love tea. And I've actually recently, my, my mother-in-law um, got me hooked on, I don't know if I'm going to pronounce it right, Ruibos tea, R-O-O, yeah, how do you say yes. it? Ruibos. Ruibos, okay. And it's yeah. South African, I think. It is exactly. so good. I love it. Yeah. It is so good. I that, love it. <laughs> yes, <laughs> at night. Book. Oh, it, oh, yeah, lovely. So my favorite at night tea, other than medicinal teas <laughs> that keep you healthy, um, chamomile. That's my go-to tea. And yeah. I can even drink in the morning and I'm like, that's fine. No problem. But uh, anyway, so I kind we, of am these days. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, now that we've got that important question done, <laughs> our, our just for fun question is, seeing as you... I, Have you been able to travel since COVID or have you been completely restricted? Yeah, I've been restricted. In fact, we had a trip planned to Canada. Um, It was going to be a family reunion in June, uh, early part of June. And, uh, and of course we can't go over the border and it was going to be up in, in Ontario. So that was canceled and uh, was supposed to be in Uganda and Ethiopia this month as well. Mm. Not happening. So, um, so unfortunately I have not traveled. Okay. Um, yeah. Well, my just for fun question is if you could hop on a plane right now and go anywhere and I said for a vacation, where would it be and what would you do? But if you, if it's something other than a vacation, you could jump in with that too. Yeah. You know, so for a vacation, the truth be known, I would love to see my family and friends in Canada, just cross over the border. I mean, I'll drive if I have to, no problem. Yeah. But, um, but actually my longing and, you know, you, you mentioned it, my longing is to get to some of those international places, Nigeria. I'm booked to go to Nigeria in August to do a lot of training and, and, um, speaking. And I, I want to be there. I mean, I really want to be there. Yeah. Submit it to the Lord's will. God, if you want me there, I'll be there. If you don't want me there at this time, well, I guess I won't be there. So that I would say that for travel or for pleasure, or, I mean, for me, that is pleasure, right? Getting to these parts of the world. Mm-hmm. Um, so that would be my place. I, I would say even above Canada, I want to, I want to be in Nigeria in August and, mm-hmm. and minister. So that's yeah. my answer. 
Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's a good what answer. <laughs> what about you? Where do you want to be? Oh, I would love to be. We, yeah. we had family trips planned also. And I just, yeah, I mean, I, I definitely miss my dad and my stepmom and my in-laws. Um, so we have in-laws in North Carolina and my dad and my stepmom are in Nevada. So we had a summer trip planned to Nevada. I have a new step niece. So I'll just call her my niece. Um, my yeah. stepsister had a new baby and I really wanted to see her in the spring. And then, you know, on the East coast, I have uh, nieces. Um, yeah. So yeah, it's yeah. just family just for, sure. for sure. Yeah. Now for vacation, being in Alaska, everybody goes to Hawaii and I've never been. So I would love to go to Hawaii sometime just for fun. Okay. So I've been there and loved it very much. And I don't, I don't know. I mean, I love to travel. I've always loved to travel. Um, and now it's interesting because my husband, Cam, we've been married this year, 30 years. Oh, and congratulations. I really was, like, thank you. I really was a young bride, you know, and <laughs> I mean, I really was one of those women that just got married really quite young. Um, and, um, it's funny because he has traveled, Cam has traveled his whole career. He's a businessman and it's always been international travel. And when I started this ministry, I mean, I've always traveled and with QVC, I always had a bag packed because you're carrying shoes and different outfits and makeup and just stuff. So with the two of us, our bedroom, we always had a carry on bag open. Mine was for QVC, <laughs> his was for traveling somewhere in the world. And, and then when I started the ministry and started traveling internationally, I'd come back and say, I just did not have any insight into what it is you went through and the exhaustion of it. I love it, but it's also, you know, it's, it's trap. It's, it's tough. So, so I would say when it comes to um, a vacation or I can see how you would say, yeah, I'd like to just skip over to Hawaii. And for me, I'm just like, I just like to go somewhere. And frankly, you know what I'd really love to do? And I don't think this is a COVID related or COVID um, dependent uh, place. I said to this to my girlfriend the other day, what I really, really love to do right now is to take a two, uh, probably all I could afford is a two day um, silence retreat. Oh, in, yeah. In a monastery or mm -hmm. a, a there's a place nearby, because I live just outside of Philadelphia, um, Dalesford Abbey, and you can have, it can be directed, or you can just go on your own. It's not a monastery, but it's an abbey, and um, I've done other retreats there, but I would love to just go to spend two days away from work, and I can't really afford more than two days away from everything at this point, I don't think, but just a couple days to be silent and listen to God because I think God I think during COVID we've had more some of us more space to really pay attention but if you're a mom and you're working and you've got kids and oh my golly and you're maybe married and your spouse is under your feet now too and you're like uh could you keep it down <laughs> you know um you haven't necessarily had the space like I have but I could really use space away from it all just to really tune in to God in a in a powerful way. So that's way too long an answer to that question. <laughs> but I, I would like two days in a monastery or at the Abbey to be silent. <laughs> I like that. I like that. I'm, I definitely that I've heard of people that have done things like that. And I've thought that would really be a neat thing to do. So, yeah. All right. Well, kind of, I would say this, we're going to publish this next week. So we're, we're still going to be in the thick of things. And the elephant in the room is the world is hurting right now. It's no secret. <laughs> we have been just in the midst of between just COVID-19 and just the, the George Floyd protests and just what I see, I guess, as being more, I don't even want to say more painful than those events themselves, but really the fallout and the interactions between the polarized viewpoints surrounding those events to me has been very disturbing and uh, emotionally draining and frustrating and saddening. I think all of that. Um, 
So in, in light of the backdrop of all of those things, I, you know, everyone listening has, has been in a difficult time right now. For you, on top of all of this, you're going through a personally really difficult time. Um, and so I, I just, first of all, wanted to kind of get an update on David, because in our last episode, for those that haven't listened, I'll link back to the first episode if you want to listen. <clears throat> Excuse me. But um, we talked about David and, and we had prayed for him um, because he had been diagnosed with cancer, colon cancer. Um, so can you give us an update on him? Because you guys are walking through some difficult times personally as well. Yes, we are. So our older son, David, um, is, uh, was diagnosed a year ago with colon cancer, and uh, he is in the middle, smack in the middle of doing a four-year double major at Harvard. Uh, the Kennedy School has a public policy program, and he's at the law school as well at Harvard, and it was, it was uh, at the end of his first year in law school that he was... Uh, that he was diagnosed. So, um, and is that right? Anyway, anyway, during law school. So it's been a year and um, David is now 27, diagnosed with colon cancer. And then there, there's a whole process that he's gone through because he went through 12 rounds of chemo. Then they tested him to see baseline for going forward. Um, he had had surgery, of course. And then, um, and then they discovered when they, when they checked him, for baseline for going forward, you know, they, then they check you every three months, then every six, et cetera. Um, and there's sort of this, this five-year mark you're looking for. Like if you're clear, you're good. Mm -hmm. Well, he didn't even make it to the one month and they found another tumor on his liver. Mm -hmm. And so they took that out. They had surgery and, uh, and then they had to wait for that and then found another tumor on his liver. So where we are right now, he's just finished. He is funny. I'm like, what has he finished at law school? <laughs> I think I think he was just going into law school. That's what it was. Um, and so he went through the entire first year with this whole, you know, drama of 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 being a uh, diagnosed with cancer. Mm -hmm. So he's finished. Praise God, he's come through this year. He's finished his his uh, first year of law school. And, wow! So uh, he finished his first year of law school amidst finished. all of this. <laughs> While on chemotherapy, having gone through a couple of surgeries, I mean, that is, you know, Jamie, I don't know if I said this to you last time. Here's the truth. There are so many people praying for us. I pray like a mad woman. We are praying. I will never know. I will never know what it would have been like right. had we not had the power of prayer. Like, I don't know, right? I, because I've always had it. We have it. And so if, if that were, you know, it's like, if you go in this direction, this is what it could look like. If you go in this direction, I'd like to see a movie about that. But I have no clue what it would look like um, and how feeble and frail all of us would be were it not for the power of prayer. So he made it through law school the first year. He's actually right now living with us um, because of course COVID. And uh, so of course he was living in Boston. He's living with us now. And because everything shut down, Harvard shut down, he'd been finishing up uh, the law school. And now he's working for a judge in New York uh, through the summer, all online. Everything's online. And he's back on chemotherapy. Um, and so he's going to continue this chemotherapy surgery little regimen until God does something. And But I mean, the fact is it's stage 3C or maybe even stage 4 cancer. And that's what we're dealing with, with my older son. And it's really, at times, extremely hard. Um, I, I want to wait for you to ask me other questions because I can share so much about this. Um, but it is riveting and it's real. And I never in my wildest dreams would have thought that um, this would be our reality. Why? I didn't think that, I don't know, maybe I'm just not waiting around for yucky stuff to happen. <laughs> but, um, you know, it's not something you ever think is gonna hit you necessarily, I guess, but it certainly has hit us hard. Yeah. Well, I guess my first, well, my first question would be, during all of this, how have you seen your prayer life 
grow, change, wane, disappear what, <laughs> during the different difficult stages of this, you know, at the different levels, what, what have the different stages of your prayer life or the different, I don't know. Do you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Depending on yes, I do. where you were, what did your prayer life look like at different times along this journey so far? Yeah, I think that's a great question. I, I will say this. I have walked with Jesus. I have, I mean, I'm writing right now, I'm doing a lot of writing mm -hmm. and summer is kind of content time for me, lots of content. And um, <clears throat> I have loved him all my life. I mean, literally, I came to faith in Jesus when I was 18 months old. And I had nothing to do with it, Jamie. I mean, he just touched my, my little heart and I, I just came alive, literally. Like, I went from being nonverbal and, and my mom thought I was a little slow to like awake and alive and lit up. And, you know, I'm middle-aged. <laughs> And I, I sometimes say to the Lord, I, I have loved you all my life. I mean, God, and I've said, and when I've been teaching or speaking, one of my prayers has been, God, in five years time, I want to say, I thought I knew you then. Wow. I can't believe how much I didn't know. Mm -hmm. And then in, uh, in five years, in 10 years time, I want to look back you know, when I'm, when I'm 50, when I'm 60, when I'm 65 and 80, I want to look back and say, oh, I thought I knew you then, but oh my gosh, I had no idea. And I think that's how I feel right now. I mean, I think when COVID hit, when David hit, David hit before COVID, mm -hmm. I was, I was like, I'm paying attention. Mm -hmm. This is, this is horrible and horrifying. And I've cried a lot. There were times when I couldn't even look at David um, yeah. without crying. You know, I'm his mother. And I, I would say to him, David, um, you are not responsible for my emotions. That's not your burden to carry. If you need for me to pull it together when I see you and to stop this, and if you're a counselor or a psychologist listening, you're, you'll be like, yeah, that'd be good. Um, but I said it to him point blank. I'm like, I, the tears just come when I see your face. And if that's painful for you, I can pull, I really can do a better job and I can pull it together, but I am emotional right now. It is real. And it, it's not for you to manage or to carry. And David has said, no, mom, it's okay. It's okay. So I don't cry all the time now. Now he's living with us. It's different, but my prayer life has always been and has grown through my youth into my twenties, into the more I've gotten to know God and fallen in love with God, not fallen in love with an outcome, mm. which is such a critical distinction. What is the difference between faith in an outcome and faith in the living God? And I am telling you, Jamie, they are very different. Mm -hmm. They are very different. And I think if any of us were to take an honest assessment, we would have to agree that we often will celebrate God and talk about the, the answered prayer when the outcome increases our faith because it is what we were praying for or hoping for or mm -hmm. having faith in. Um, and I... I really am learning the difference and it's not easy because if I'm honest, I want the outcome more. Sometimes yeah. I'm horrified to say that I want the presence of the living God. And that is called idolatry. And that is horrifying to me. And maybe I'm being too dramatic, too dramatic but that's what God is showing me at this time. Uh, not the only thing he's showing me, but one of the big things. So my prayer life is consistent. I mean, I stay on my, literally, I stay in my chair where I meet with him morning by morning. Um, sometimes he wakes me up in the middle of the night and I go downstairs and get on my face and weep. So it's, it's very real. It's very vibrant. Sometimes I just sit with him and say, I have no words. Please just mm -hmm. speak to me. 
And that's what it looks like right now for me. Yeah. So do you, that's not too dramatic at all. That's profound. I love that. And just really a lot to chew on. And um, when, so when you are, as you're discovering this, does it discourage you from praying for healing or discourage you from praying for the outcome for fear that you'll latch onto that too much? Or do you feel free to do that and still hold it with open hands? Jamie, great question. Um, I do not feel afraid to pray for an outcome. You know, if we think about Jesus in the garden, he gives us the model of prayer. Um, I think if we pull back on the desires of our soul, mm -hmm. I think if we edit and we delete and we, you know, we're all careful. There's a great phrase, pray as you can, not as you ought. And I think if we do that, we will find ourselves building lovely little walls between people and ourselves, but certainly God. Yeah. If I can't, you know, Jesus in the garden wept with <sighs> sorrowful blood drops, like from a very scientific sort of biological standpoint, literally it was coming, right? The, the blood mm -hmm. wept, Abba, Abba. And he cried and he poured it out. That's, I think that those are the, those are the steps, pour it out. Step number two, thy will be done. But I think if we invert those, thy will be done, we then edit the connection of our souls to the living God. So I always will start with, I'm just going to pour it out mm -hmm. and um, let God, you know, decipher it, interpret it, the deepest, you know, groanings of my soul as the mm -hmm. scriptures teach um, and let God go after what that means. Plus I'll discover all kinds of stuff about myself. What do I really want? Mm -hmm. What do I really long for? Um, and I beg God, heal my son. And God has shown me some cool things about that. Mm -hmm. um, and so I pour it out, pour it out. And I certainly am asking that God would, would heal my son fully and that he would live many decades. And then I say, nevertheless, I submit to your authority. And I will still, and I will confess this, I will still love you and praise you. I will definitely like be a wreck. I would be a wreck if um, he takes my son. But I will, I declare that I love the living God and want him more. And that is like when I'm really strong, I say it. And when I'm weak and on my face, I will sob. I like literally sob those words as well. So yeah. Yeah. I'm not going to, I'm not, gonna, I'm still going to pray for an outcome, but I'm then going to say, but I will even still, I want what you want, God. I want you more than the outcome. Let's just settle the matter, you know? Amen. That, that'll <laughs> preach. Mm. <laughs> no, that is good, Nancy. That is really good. Well, I loved, um, I think it was on Instagram that I saw a quote and I'm guessing this might be part of the six sessions. I'm not sure. It said, let's release life in the middle of the mess. Is that yes. part of six sessions or is that just something yeah. out there? Okay. Oh, well, I mean that particular, that actually, that's a Joyce Myers quote. Let's release okay. joy, a okay. release joy in the middle of the mess. That's her quote. Right. Um, but we were like, we're releasing life. That's yeah. me. I'm all about living fully alive. Come alive. You know, too many people are like, is this what life is? Good Lord. If this is all, is all there is, um, and kind of barely, you know, barely breathing. Yeah. And I'm like, listen, li listen, there is genuine life to be had everywhere always. And we just got to find that, you know? Yeah. So, yeah. So I I loved that. I love your Instagram posts. Um, but yeah, I love that quote. So, I mean, right now there's, there's a lot of mess. There's so much pain being experienced in not only the black community, but just the world at large. There's, you know, the COVID pandemic, there's, um, you know, 
social media, economic instability, schools up in the air. I mean, in the middle oh. of the mess, what, what has that looked like for you personally? What are the specific ways that you have practiced that? And what could it look like for the rest of us that have different struggles? Mm, mm. Well, I think there is, and I, I know I've said this, and I feel like sometimes I'm just this little parrot. I just can't, you know, I have to, I, I, I will never be able to come away from this, but you cannot uh, replace, there is no substitute for where you're going to get your fire, where you're going to get your life, where you're going to get your vigor, where you're going to get your whatever. Um, anything that's worth having, any peace, any power, any life, any sign of that, that glow, that ember is going to first come from your relationship with God. And you go, oh, there it goes again. There she goes again. Guess what? <laughs> you know, it's like, I don't know what to tell you. Brush your teeth every morning. Just brush your teeth. People don't want to smell your foul breath. They don't want to be near, you know. I'm like, okay, is there anybody listening who struggles with getting up and brushing their teeth? Maybe, maybe, but is there anything you do every day? And I hope it's brush your teeth. I mean, <laughs> I hope one of those things is brush your teeth. It's as basic prayer, connected, get, being connected to God. That's where I'm going to get the life. Mm -hmm. He is life. So I, there is no substitute for that. So there you go. That's the starting point. Then beyond that, and what that looks like, by the way, Jamie, is as varied as the infinite God who, who holds all life. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like you think maybe you are a vital and vibrant person listening right now. Maybe you are someone who's like, you got it all going on. You got it all wrapped up. Maybe that is you. Or maybe you've been so downtrodden. Maybe you've been so oppressed that you're like, I've given up. I can't even imagine what it would feel like to feel alive. Like I've been so lifeless for so long, you know, and then there's a spectrum. There's the the spectrum in between, there's always more life to be had. There's always hope of life when it comes to the living God. Um, so once that's going on, and that's not just in the beginning, it's, it's like all throughout the day. I mean, I'm looking for him. I'm looking for him. We're dancing, we're singing, we're, then, then my prayer every day, you know, Jamie is God, help me know what to pick up and what to put down today. Because I think we're doing a lot of stuff and God's like, I didn't ask you to do that. That's not your mm. job for today. Why? What are you doing over there when I'm like over here? <laughs> and I don't want, you know what I mean? Like, I don't want to be just busy. I have no desire, although I can do that just like anybody else. I'm like, no, no, no. I want to be where he is and be doing what he's saying. Come on, come on, come on over here. Um, so releasing life in the middle of, you know, George Floyd's death means I am saying um, there's something radically twisted right now. And I'm able to put that out in a way that makes sense for me, is true to me and is true to what God is saying. Say this as much as I can hear him. Mm -hmm. And let the chips fall where they may. I will tell you, I put a post out yesterday, Jamie, mm -hmm. on my Facebook and my Instagram, Nancy Hicks Live, both of them. And woo, did it get the comments going? And I noticed I lost some followers because I put out a post that I was part of a peaceful protest. And I said, thy kingdom come, O God. And there were people, Christians, who were angry at me. And you know what? I lost some followers because I said, because I am on the side of justice. I am not on a political side. It's not about Democrat or Republican. It has zilch to do with that with me. Zilch. It had, I, don't, I don't even care. What I care about is when I look at the scriptures and I've been reading through and such, just like, you know, melting into and marinating in 
the, the prophets. I've been looking through, reading through Isaiah and Jeremiah and Ezekiel and Daniel, and I'm looking at, at Amos and all throughout the scriptures. And then you hop over to Jesus. Hello. Everything is, don't even sing to me. Don't, don't come to me with your offerings. This is hard medicine, right? Do not talk to me until you let justice roll like a river. Like God is so clear. I just feel like this is such a time for repentance. So for me, part of releasing life in the middle of the mess, part of it is joy and, and vitality. And part of it is hard like, here's what I'm hearing from God. And you might not like me. Or you may walk away from me, but I am not going to like be all uh, nasty and negative. Absolutely not. But I am going to share what God is saying to me and showing me right now. What do you think about that? I don't know. I love it. And I think that, you know, when you talk about releasing life, I think that sometimes, um, fear and like for me as a people pleaser yeah fear of other people's voices and and the chatter of other people or even their expectations um wanting wanting to please others can seriously hinder that god life from from flowing through us whether it's our words our actions um fear of failure, you know, when God is calling you to something and, and, you know, whether it's going to a peaceful protest or writing a post that you're not sure how it'll be taken, if you feel like it's what God has put in you. Um, yeah, I think fear is a real barrier to releasing life. And I just, I love your boldness and your passion. It really is inspiring and contagious. So Thank you. I, I have to say, you know, um, anybody that I admire and I, you know, my, my, my signature color is red. Like I, right now I have coral lips on because it's summer, but, <laughs> I, <laughs> but I am known for my bold red lip. Like if you're, you know, when I was on air with QVC, I'd have makeup artists, you know, and, and those who are creating cool makeup, like um, Jamie from it and uh, Mally, they'd come up to me and be like, this is your red, Nancy, and um, make up the artists, um, the, the stylists would, would do our faces, our makeup people. Um, and, and they would always be pulling out bold red lips. For me, bold red lip, red is a, such a fiery, strong color. Let me tell you something. I still have concern. My deepest concern more and more though, Jamie, is God. I still have the fear. And I'm a fiery, strong woman. Mm -hmm. um, and I think I'm starting to get to the point, and maybe I'm not starting, maybe it really is just increasing in measure and I'm more aware, where I'm like, listen, if this is truly of God that I am a Christian speaker now and not still on air with QVC, but he's called me to this, I really do want to be far more afraid that I'm missing the calling, which mm -hmm. I think you know, if you're submitted to God, he's like, yeah, I got the calling, but I want to be far more in tune to what he is. He is mandating me to say or to do than I am about my reputation. Um, I don't want to be a bull in a China shop because let's be clear people who are putting their comments on my page feel that they're speaking on God's behalf as well. You know, men in the church, leaders who feel that women can be preachers, they're egalitarians, um, believe that that is founded in scripture as much as our brothers who are complementarians, these leaders, male, oh, let's say male, men or women, um, who say that women cannot be elders or, or preachers. They're all, they're good. These are good people who believe mm -hmm. that they are interpreting the scriptures and speaking on God's behalf. They're, they're, they're my, both of them are my brothers mm -hmm. and I'm going to disagree with one of them. But so how do we disagree in a way that honors God, that honors the words he's given to us without fear and trepidation, but with power and with life and with honor Mm -hmm. actual honor um and do what he's called us to do in the moment not just for a lifetime but right right now as i speak to you 
um, with each post. It's not just, you know, arbitrary stuff. That is, you're doing God's work as you post and as you comment. Right. So. No, I, I agree with that. And I think the, the point that you make about, I think there's definitely a difference between posting something you believe in and then I think there's a difference between like what I have come across is knowing when to comment and on someone else's post and when I do how to comment in a way that is, you know, like Jesus talks about um, how uh, a gentle word turns away wrath yeah. Mm -hmm. um, either when you're attacked, how to respond in a way that will turn that wrath in a different direction. Or sometimes if it's someone else's post and you're tempted to comment because you disagree in particular, um, when not to put that down, when is that not going to further the kingdom of God? Or when is that not going to make a difference? Or when to send a private message to someone instead of commenting on, on the social media post directly on their just to have your mic drop moment, you know, because I think a lot of times we listen to be able to jump in and make a point and sound like we're better or letting knowledge puff us up. And see, that's the difference between that's, that's, uh, you know, when you are someone who is saying, my job is not, my job is to be the servant of a living God. That's my job. My job, my, my, not only my job, my honor, my joy, my pleasure, my, my all. Um, I'm getting emotional even as I'm talking about this with you, Jamie, to be honest. Um, I am at the master's bidding. Like I am here to serve God. I am here to serve you. So at any given moment, as we're speaking on a podcast, as we're posting, as we're commenting on posts, you know, the wild, wild west, it's, a, it's the modern marketplace, right? Online stuff. And now yeah. that's, that's all we've got right now. Um, as I'm um, speaking to my child, or now my grown sons and daughter-in-law, Rachel, as you're speaking to your young children, as you're speaking over your infants, as you're interacting with your with your spouse, as you're interacting with Father's Day's coming up, with, um, you know, the father that was not there for you. Listen, this is getting back to the question. This is all about, I get to bless or curse. I get to release death or life. Mm. And it's, it's not something like, I just decide, I'm going to my whole life long just release life. I mean, you can. It's a one-time decision, like following Christ, right? It's like this moment in time we cross over from death to life. Some people know when that time is, some don't. But they have an awareness of growing. But also, it's an everyday choice to follow Christ. It's an everyday moment by moment. Today I decide. Today I submit. Um, and I think that's true for releasing life. Today, I just I, I I am prompted by the Spirit to be quiet on this point. Mm. Today, I choose to steer the wrath away with a kind and gentle word. With listen, I'm not talking, by the way, about a a pithy, um, spineless word. I'm talking about a powerful word of life. Mm. Uh, strong and this is the this is the, the the praying piece of it is like god you give me the words to say right now i'm submitted i'm listening speak to me oh god so that i can speak life right at this moment i think that's the way i want to live i know that's the way i want to live i i think that's how god wants us to live yeah and humility is such a big part of that there was a um uh prominent person, like influencer that I'm on her email list. And she recently, today I got an email where she, something was brought to her attention that she had said and done that was maybe not appropriate. And she called it out and said, you know, I apologize for that and I'm going to move forward. But she wasn't deterred yeah. from trying, you know, to move forward and, and to continue trying to do the right thing. And I thought that that was more powerful to me than if everything had just gone fine. So I think 
releasing life can be failing gracefully and doing it with honor and bringing glory to God in the way that we respond to, to learning as we go and getting back up and, and not giving up even when we might fail in an area. <laughs> I think that's the point too. I think, you know, you know what's going on in your soul. Now, listen, COVID's a hard time. Um, you know, who would have thought that we'd be living through a pandemic? Yeah. Um, who would have thought that, uh, well, we, we all could imagine that, that, you know, all hell would break loose when it comes to racial injustices. Um, that's there's nothing new there i mean 400 years right um although even as i say that so confidently there probably are people listening and going what's white privilege there's no such thing i'm acutely aware that people are like that's not even true it doesn't even exist racism is the thing of the past i am acutely aware that there are that there are people probably listening who feel that way um so i i really do feel like what did we expect? I mean, during COVID, during uh, uh, discrimination, during cancer that hits your family, a marriage that struggles, uh, a comment that comes, did you think it was going to be smooth? It's not going to be smooth. This is where, this is where life goes to, it, it, it deepens, you know, deep calls to deep and life goes to a new level. Mm. It goes to a new level. I don't know if I said this to you before, but I believe that the extent to which we are able to enter into the pain of life, into the suffering of life with God and have him meet us there is the extent to which genuine life is released in and over and through you. Like they're equal in measure. It's like a pendulum swinging. If you'll only go this far with the realization of what's coming up in you while you've been confined, if you'll only look just a little bit at that, okay, but I'm just here to tell you that the, it will be equal in measure to the genuine life released in you. You want to go a little deeper and go, good Lord, look at the way I treat my husband when I'm really frustrated. And you start to go there with God, right? Or you go, oh my gosh, turns out I do have ill feelings towards people of color. <gasps> and you go there with God? You go there with God? Do you know, equal to the measure of, you're able to go there with God and let him work that out in you, equal to the measure will the life be released in you. Oh. And I'm telling it just is so, it is so true. Did you well, get that? Did you? <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm still thinking about it. Yeah. It's so, I know, Jamie, but I'm, I'm telling you, it's true. Yeah, it is so I love true. That. It is. I've lived it. I'm living it now. Mm. I am living it right now. You go there with God. Do not shy away from the crap of your life, enter into that darkness with the living God who overcame all darkness mm -hmm. one time and every time, all darkness. You enter in with him and you sort it out with him. Don't shy away. Go, 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 go with him. And he will release genuine life in you. I know it. I'm living it right now. That is good. That is really good, Nancy. I'm going to try and uh, I'll, I'll make that, that quote into an Instagram post because I love it. That's perfect. Um, yeah. I mean, that, that applies to all of us, no matter what we're going through, because there's so much right now. And then on top of that, just the everyday things that everyone always goes through in life. So that, that is really a good word. Yeah. So I want you to talk just as we, I don't want to keep you here all day. I could, I could totally sit here and talk with you and just glean knowledge from you and <laughs> all day long, but we, we're running out of time. So I really want you to just tell us in short, meant to live. Um, I'm so excited that it's been turned into an audio, an audible book because I'm going to get that just so I can listen to it in your words with your voice. Cause you did record it, right? I did. Yes, yeah. I did. And I think that's really powerful. So I'm excited for that. So I would encourage anyone that, um, that hasn't read Meant to Live, um, Living in Light of the Good News, that you, I, I would love 
for them to get it in the audible version because it really is, I'm sure, great read by you. And then um, I have not gone through it yet, but I, I did order it and I have a copy of six sessions and I'm going to go through it, but I didn't get a chance to before we spoke. So could you give us just kind of a summary of what do you hope women will take away from this that they might not get just from reading the book? So in the book, Meant to Live, um, I do give helpful questions and you're able to interact. Um, but through all my years of teaching Bible, um, and I taught Bible to women who didn't know God at all, all the way to really seasoned leaders, you know, um, and so I've leading uh, in the church is, has always been just a part of my life. So I have found that keeping it tight, six sessions, it's six sessions, um, gives women and it's, you know, self-regulated. So you can, you know, you get the link and then you get the six videos, you get the PDF that's got helpful questions, insightful questions, and more biblical teaching that you're able to go at your pace. I am a firm, firm believer in community and so I think it's a great opportunity to pull community together, to pull people. I've heard from some people that they're, they're going to do the video at home. So it's me teaching the video at home on their own. And then they're going to get together in their girlfriend's backyard, for example. And they'll all sit social distancing and be able to do the questions together. So there's opportunities like that. So I'm a firm believer you get the opportunity to now be though you could with a book, but this is going to take it a little deeper, give you an opportunity in six sessions only to explore a little more deeply. What does it look? Tell me more. Tell me again about the glory that God has given to me. And we go, yeah, yeah. I meant to glorify God. No, no, no. We pull it apart and you start to really catch a vision for just how much glory he has bestowed on you. Um, and we go after what I said a minute ago about the extent to which you enter into the dark, the deep, the sorrowful is the extent to which genuine life. Okay, so what does that look like? And I guide you through so that I can help you do that to release the life um, and power. I think in our country, we got away from the original powers that God gave to his people. They were not political. They were not societal. They were not economic. They were the power of the spirit and the power of the gospel. I mean, we go after, let's get your power back. So these are the things to explore in community or on your own, but preferably, you know, I would always say, try to do it within community. Um, in, in the six sessions of Men to Live, I'm so excited about it. That is great. I'm looking forward to that because I, I just got it. I don't know, a couple of days ago, and I'm, I'm looking forward to jumping in. And I will have to look into getting a couple of people together to go through oh, it with. Yeah. And you could even do Zoom. I actually got a notification that Zoom has removed their 40-minute limit for a group meeting. So you can get the free Zoom app and jump on with your girlfriends for you know, your discussion time. <laughs> Hopefully. And actually what I want to do soon is start hopping on for those because people are, are getting it. I'm thrilled. Oh, that's I, start, uh, huh, I know. I want to start hopping on to social media, uh, you know, Facebook and Instagram. I'm on Pinterest and uh, Twitter now too, but I'm very, I'm just so active on, on Instagram and Facebook, Nancy Hicks Live. Um, I want to start doing Facebook Lives just to answer, like people have the opportunity to email me thoughts, awesome. questions, comments. And then once a week, I'll hop on and start, um, I'll probably start doing that pretty soon, actually, after Father's Day. Um, so I, I want to hop on and answer your questions and talk a little more, you know, deeply about, about some of the things that are coming up in Mental Lift. So that's probably going to start, uh, I'll start doing that weekly. I'm thinking, um, you know, probably in a couple of weeks time. So great. Oh, that's great. Yeah. Well, I will, I'll keep track and I'll, I'll definitely be sharing some of that stuff with our praying Christian women community too, and just let them know what's going on with that. Awesome. So, well, where can our listeners, we know you're on Facebook and Instagram, Pinterest, and what was the other one? Twitter. Twitter. Um, so you're Nancy Hicks live. At everything. Everything. Just Nancy Hicks everything. live. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, Nancy Hicks Live, my community, you know, which I, whom I love, 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 love. Um, you know, I send a devotional out every week and just kind of 
you know, they, uh, they get to know first, you see. So um, everything's at nancyhickslive.com or any of those Nancy Hicks Live, Hicks Live handles. And um, I genuinely, I have to say, I genuinely love to engage with people. I love it. My pleasure. So that's how you can find me. Well, good. Well, Nancy, how can we pray for you today? Let us know. Uh, I would say, I will say, I mean, the obvious is David, my David. Yeah. Um, but in addition to that, you know, that God is drawing us deeper, strengthening us in him um, during this time. Just again, sort of uh, our deepest prayer is I want to know you in this time, God. I want to know you. Um, I want to experience you, that is, not just a head knowledge, but I want to experience you. And that's my prayer for my David yeah. at this time. And it's my prayer for myself as well. So, okay, well, let's pray. Father God, we just come before you today with, um, I just, I feel like I, I, began with kind of a heavy heart, and I, I just feel hope, Lord. I just thank you for this message of hope, for um, just being able to, to utilize this pain and the struggles and all of the things around us to usher your life into this world by, by walking through it with you, God. Thank you. We just, we praise you for being the redeemer of all things. You redeem everything that the enemy intends for evil, you repurpose it for your good purposes and you glorify yourself and you further your kingdom through these very things that look bad to our human eyes. Father, we thank you for that. And we just praise you for being on your throne through it all. And God, we just lift up Nancy to you. I thank you for just the powerful words that she shared with us today for her passion that I just always come away from talking to her feeling um, ignited to um, just live for you, God, in, in a more intentional way and in a way that will pour out to the people around me. I thank you for that gift that you've given her, Lord. I pray you would just stoke that flame that as she pours out, that you would just be pouring in even more so that she would constantly be overflowing, that she would never run on empty, God, with all of the things that she has on her plate and all the emotional drains that she has right now, God, that you would be pouring her in, pouring into her just tenfold of what she's pouring out, God. We lift her up to you and just um, pray for your peace and your comfort and your strength as she walks beside David um, just through the, the chemo treatments and his battle with cancer. Um, we pray that you would just uh, bring total and complete healing to David. God, we join her in those prayers for total and complete healing. We pray that you would give him doctors that would have wisdom, that surgeons would have steady hands, and, and that you would just use the medical community to bring healing to him. God, we pray for miraculous healing. If that is your will, that you would just unleash your, your miracle working power on his body to bring complete and total healing to him. And God, we just, we thank you that you are a God who works in all things for the good of those who love you and who are called according to your purposes. We pray for Nancy, for David, um, for Cam, for Aaron, for their whole family, all of their family, that you would just wash over them with your power, that they would truly walk with you and experience your kingdom here on earth, God, that they would experience the abundant, full life that you promise us, God, that's our birthright by the blood of Jesus here on this earth, God, that they would walk in that, in that um, freedom and in that abundance here on earth and just keep drawing closer and closer to you. Just like Nancy prayed, God, that five years from now, they would all look back and think, wow, I thought I knew him then, but now I know you so much better. We just pray for each one of us, God, and each person listening that you would just plant that fire in our own hearts, that desire and that passion to love you with all of our heart, soul, mind, strength. And that through that and the overflow of that, we would love each person that we come in contact with in that same way. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Thank you, Jamie.